I have a question for you lot. What are the most iconic BM up games? Final Fight, Golden Axe, Double Dragon, maybe Knight of the Round, on the best of the bunch is of course Streets of Rage. Unlike the rest, Streets of Rage series was released only for Sega consoles. There are four Streets of Rage games out there. Three of them were released in early 90s for Sega Mega Drive or Genesis in the US, Master System and Game Gear consoles, and the fourth was released quite recently for practically every available system today. Streets of Rage, also named Bernako in Japan, was developed by Sega itself and released in 1991. It's a typical side-scrolling beat-em-up video game, vastly inspired by Sega's own game you all probably know, Golden Axe. It works pretty much the same, you can either play one player or two player mode, choosing from three different characters, Axel, Adam or Blaze. After you chose the character, you'll embark on one of the most amazing stories in a video game. No, I'm taking the piss, there's no story. Or it may be called a setting, and even that may be an overstatement. There is an evil syndicate in the city run by Mr. X, and two, as an ex-copper, are going to kick his ass, presumably, on the city. Mega Drive's resolution is 320 by 240, and that's not exactly 4K, is it? Given this, Sega somehow managed to make the game look brilliant. What I love the most about the game's graphics is its dilapidated atmosphere, run-down, decayed parts of the city on its wonderful night setting. Characters are a bit too small, but they still look cracking and they are perfectly animated. As I said before, there are three characters you can choose from, Eddie Monta, Axel Stone and Blaze Fielding. They should somehow differ in the power, the speed, and how far they can jump. In reality, it's mostly about appearance, just choose whoever you fancy the most. There's nothing new about this kind of gameplay, you just move your character to the right, and you need to fight a lot of enemies. For that, you've got three buttons, special move, punch, and jump. Since the game was inspired by Golden Axe, they had used similar system for special moves. Pressing the button calls the police to help you. It kills off everyone on the screen except for the boss, which only loses some amount of life. As in the Golden Axe, you've got limited use of this move, and when it's depleted, you just can't use it anymore, until you find this. Next button is a simple punch, and pressing it more times is a simple combo, nothing more. You can, however, combine punch and jump buttons. Take a guess what happens when you press the punch in midair. On pressing both simultaneously is a back punch or a back kick. On the soul, not too many basic moves, is it? When you get close to the enemy while not hitting him, you can grab the bastard and either kick his face in with the knee or throw him. Throw is generally more powerful, but when you're holding somebody from behind, it's even more so. There are also some weapons you can pick up and use baseball bat, some kind of pipe, you can break a ball over someone's head or stick a knife in someone's ribs. And there are other pickups you can get. Some kind of pie that refills about a third of your life bar, and chicken that refills an entire life bar, or maybe it's a turkey judging by its size. This adds an additional life, and this adds one special move. As you can see on the title screen, the music was composed by Yuzo Koshiro, and it's brilliant. Mega Drive uses Yamaha's FM synthesis chip for music and user utilized it quite well. It fits the game and the game's atmosphere perfectly. Of course, every stage has its own track and every track is pretty much different. It's mainly chiptune, electronic music, and even though I hate electronic music, this one is awesome.
Even though the game is nothing new, and it wasn't nothing new in 1991 either, the graphics, the atmosphere, the music, the controls, everything combined made this game a masterpiece in its genre. It is just a simple beat em up game, but it's so much fun just running about and beating up everything that moves, or even something that doesn't. Every stage has its own boss of course. They are a lot tougher than your average henchman and they can kill you with just two hits. Of course the game's got some flaws. There are not too many different enemies. The odds you have to fence off are basically three blokes in different colors. There are not too many different moves either, let alone special moves. But other than that, it's just brilliant. What is perhaps the best part of the game is a co-op game or two-player game or whatever you want to call it. You and your mate could spend entire evening kicking the hell out of every wanker you meet on the streets of rage.